but so is the way we work with our energy. A lot of that was taken out of scriptures. It needs to be brought back. But what they were really doing was, you know, I've had situations where I work on someone and they believe they're healed like that. They call me a miracle worker. I say, no, please don't say that. I don't even want that going around out there. There was no miracle here. Okay? And if it was a miracle, I didn't do it. A miracle we all participate in. It's a universal thing. But really, I don't think it was a miracle. Because what's going to happen if that person leaves now, they go, well, that was a miracle. And they just go right back to the same lifestyle. They go right back into the same problems. They're right back to that problem later. Or it'll manifest in another way. Western, I love this analogy for Western medicine. You ever go to a carnival and you see this game with gopher? The gopher comes up and you have to hit the gopher. And it drops down the hole and then it pops up another hole. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to do this. Mm -hmm. Western medicine is the one holding the hammer. <laughs> The disease, or what they consider the disease, is the gopher. <laughs> the holes are the manifestations. So, oh, pop down over there. It's just going to pop up over here. Until the person actually deals with the issue, which is the gopher, it's just going to keep manifesting. So, in your opinion, what is, what is disease and how do you heal? That's a very good question. Disease is very dynamic. One side We'll say that disease comes from uh, how the mind works, uh, dis-ease, you know, the, the person completely steps away from their path in life, they're not doing the things they love, they're, they're living their life improperly, and, and, and yeah, of course, and everything from ethics to the way they think, mm -hmm. you know, negative thinking and all of these. Are they correct? Yes, they are correct. Our mind will poison our body, our negative thoughts, our brain alone through negative thinking will send those impulses into the body. Mm -hmm. If I injure myself and I go, my damn hand won't heal, <laughs> my damn hand. That's what my brain is saying. Mm -hmm. It only makes sense. It's, it's actually not, you know, weird, hokey-pokey stuff. It, it makes complete sense, especially if you study neurology. You'll see that the way we think triggers the way our brain responds to our body and vice versa. It's a nonlinear effect. Now, on the other side, well, things like Electromagnetism, uh, the negative side of electromagnetism, uh, you know, pollution, uh, oh, oh, I could go on, the food we eat, mm -hmm. the poisons that are in our food, the poisons that are in our soil, all of these things create diseases. Are they correct? Yes, they are correct. Um, people have injuries, mm -hmm. you know. So there's many, a, 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 a senior could fall down and break a hip and then spiral, 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 spiral down into generation. Mm -hmm. Or they could fall down and break that hip and it could stimulate them into a new lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden they completely change their life and they become very healthy. You can't pinpoint what health and disease really are. Mm -hmm. We try to. The ego wants to so much. Mm -hmm. The mind wants to understand it so much. But we spend so much time focusing on the problem that we don't shift to the solution enough. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need to do, is shift to the solution. Um, my little boy starts coughing. Daddy, I have a cough. He's only two, right? So I go, Sage, you don't have a cough. You're just coughing. <laughs> you don't own the cough. If, if, you, if you tell yourself you have a cough, you're claiming ownership of it. The mind, the brain, will not want to let it go after that. Because now it's yours. <laughs> And that's a major problem. We identify with the illnesses that move through us. Mm -hmm. And we, I have asthma. I have uh, homeochromatitis. I have diabetes. I'm a diabetic. You know, I'm an asthmatic. Now I'm identifying with it. It's me. Mm -hmm. No, I am expressing certain symptoms of, a, a, of a, an imbalance in my system that needs to be recorrected. Mm -hmm. That's really what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so I need to focus on the solution to recorrect it. When we're doing acupuncture, really all it's about is redirecting the energy. Mm. The body knows how to heal itself. It's completely mm. If I cut my hand, it'll heal. Yeah. You know? If maybe I have to pinch it together to make it happen quicker, or stitch it together to make it happen quicker. Mm. But even if I didn't, eventually the gap would cross. Mm. question is, how does the gap happen? How, sorry, how, how, does, how does it go across the gap? That's a very tricky question. Because there's a whole other side to healing we don't really pay much attention to. 
And that is a part of the body that is electromagnetic. Mm -hmm. And that is like the imprint of how the body is designed and the way that it works. Every cell has its own vibration. Every atom has its own vibration. And these vibrations collectively come together and become synergy. That is chi. Chi is synergy. Okay. So that's why we say chi doesn't really exist, because it's synergy. You can't point at synergy and just say that's what it is. Because synergy is a makeup of a multitude of different dynamics working together. What's well, balance? Most people think that balance is like a scale, right? You know, like we see that traditional scale. Yes. Go this way or this way, right? We don't see balance that way. We see it more like a pie chart. And it's a dynamic because I don't need the exact same amount of melatonin as serotonin. The body doesn't work that way. I need a specific amount of melatonin, a specific amount of serotonin, a specific amount of dopamine, you know? And so that's why it's more like a pie chart. We may need more of one thing than another. In fact, we do need more of one thing than another. And so that's how we begin to understand the balance. And that's where it, it can be tricky because people want to associate balance with that, this or that. You know, light side, dark side, right? But what about the twilight? How often do we focus on the twilight? It's always light or dark. Is life really light and dark, white and black, you know? So the path to healing, would you say, if, when your clients come through the door, is there a specific path? I know not the same thing for everyone, but are there certain aspects that each of us should be doing in order to promote health? You know what, it's interesting you say that. There is a specific path. Okay. It's their own path. Oh, you got they it. Have to, they <laughs> have to tap into their nature. Yes. Um, Buddhism, they call it the Dharma nature, right? Okay. Which is your true self. That which resonates so much inside of you that brings you to life. You know, there's religions out there that try to suppress passion yes. and power. But I think that they're just maybe viewing it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. Because passion can stir a very um, artistic amount of creation. Mm -hmm. To me, the meaning of life is creation. And so when we begin to lose our creative force, our life force is, is, is motivated by that creative force. And when the creative force starts to deplete, everything else begins to deplete with it. Mm. Our love of life will even deplete with it. So we have to keep transforming. We have to keep changing. We have to keep learning how to adapt to the changing of our environment, the changing of our, of our life as we go. Do you, ever, do, do you stay a baby? No. Do you stay a child? No. Do you stay a teenager? Do you stay... You see where I'm going with this. Yes. Life is about a constant shift of transformation. Yes. And that's what it's about, is letting go of that baggage so that you can allow yourself to transform. So here's some maybe some, some approaches. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times, um, and this is funny, a lot of people go to a massage therapist and they just relax and they get massaged. Mm -hmm. And they'll just keep going back. They'll go to a chiropractor, they, let, they lay there, the chiropractor cracks their back. They keep going back. Tuina, which is the Chinese massage, Qigong massage, uh, that's the main massage technique that I tend to focus on the most. Mm -hmm. And it's an energy form of massage. Triggers the body's own healing response. Mm -hmm. And that helps the individual then begin to work with themselves. There's many times where the person actually doesn't lay there and relax and just have a nice relaxing massage. In fact, instead, I become like their counselor. Mm -hmm. And they begin telling me the problems that are going on. And I try to dig in there with them and get to the root of the problem. Because it's not just the physical body that needs healing. It's our social body. Mm -hmm. How we interact with our environment. Um, you know, with our loved ones, with our workplace. With, with, with everything that, that is a part of who we are designing ourselves as in this time and space. And... As I'm doing this, and I'm working on the individual, they'll go into this problem, and this area of the body will suddenly begin to react, mm -hmm. and I'll go there. And so right away, I'm, okay, this situation, or this, this maybe ailment, or tension, or whatever it is, now I see the root of it. Mm -hmm. It's coming from this problem. And that irritation connects to it. So what I do, instead of allowing that irritation to help channel into the problem, 
It's almost like the reverse. I hope to draw it out so that they have some clarity and then they can see the connection of what's going on. And then I try to talk to them about what's going on in their life, changes they may need. Excuse me. Many times I won't just start telling them mm -hmm. that's not right. Mm -hmm. I'll ask them questions. I get them yeah. thinking about it for themselves. Yeah. Try to get them to help find the solution for themselves. Guide them to the solution. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be my solution. I can offer tools, mm -hmm. and I'll do that for sure. I try to get them then to come into the class. Overall, Chicology is a sustainable health system. Okay. And the reason it's a sustainable health system is because you learn to manage your own health. Mm -hmm. You learn the sustainability of it. They can come to me for therapy, and that's great. I can help them. But I don't want the dependency. I don't want it. I don't want to control their lives. I want nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. They, in fact, control is an illusion. So right away, I even try to get them away from control. And so they start taking the classes, and they start learning how to move the energy for themselves. Mm -hmm. They reach deep into the, to the collective consciousness of their own body, which then, after time, connects them to a higher level of consciousness that is not only themselves, it's the neural net of the collective consciousness of this planet, of this solar system, of this galaxy, this universe, you know, however we want to look at it. Mm -hmm. And some people will want to go into the full study and they want to really connect with that, you know, ecological, connective conscious state that, that goes from beyond the subatomical to the ultimate galactic and beyond. Some people, they just want to learn how to breathe. Right. They just want to be able to learn to manage that stress, you know, in their daily lives. So there's degrees for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I believe, though, that everyone needs to learn how to breathe. Will you share, well, you've, you've mentioned breathing a few times. Mm -hmm. Will you share with us what you mean by knowing how to breathe? I'm sure when people in the audience hear that, they think, inhale, exhale. Yeah. <laughs> well, what does that mean exactly? Uh, there's what we call breath pressure. Okay. And breath pressure isn't really talked about in a lot of things. But it is the most important thing. Sorry, I just need to take a quick drink of water here. That's so nice. Breath pressure manages our body completely. From how we digest, to how our hormones balance themselves, to even to, to how we think. There, there's like this old saying, you know, my food is my mood. You know, <laughs> right? That kind of thing. And, well, the way I breathe... <clears throat> is even more powerful than the way I eat. Mm -hmm. Most of the food we eat is to get the oxygen from it. And oxygen is such a major important aspect. We don't even really know exactly what oxygen is on the ultimate level. Oxygen goes up into the atmosphere and collects uh, cosmic radiation and brings it back down. So is it possible that it's even a mediator, a translator of that energy that we can't just be exposed to. An astronaut goes up there and if he's exposed to it too long, he'll get cancer. So <clears throat> there has to be a translator. Mm -hmm. Oxygen is an amazing translator for this. And look how much oxygen we're depleting from our planet. Mm -hmm. You know, this ultimate bridge between the inner world of the Earth and the outer world of the Earth, which then moves into the solar system. Mm -hmm. And all of those things feed us. You know, we have... We have Billions and billions of, of subatomic particles moving through our body, neutrinos moving through our bodies, you know, all the time. And if we learn to channel the way that the energy moves through us and around us and work with it, which we can do, mm -hmm. believe it or not, uh, then the way energy moves through us is changed. The way gravity moves through us is changed. You know, how our body responds to gravity is changed. The way I breathe connects me to everything. My boss pisses me off, <gasps> you know, I go, I go into a meeting, and I, you know, if I'm nervous, mm -hmm. if I'm upset, <gasps> you know, uh, the breath is connected to everything, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. If you get ill, your breathing changes. You get stressed, your breathing changes. You get excited, your breathing changes. If you go through the breath, you can learn how to change from a reactional way of living to a way of responding 